Hey everyone, welcome back to Bible Verse Breakdown. I'm your friend and Weta Wanomarin, and as you know, in this channel we break down Bible verses. So in this video, we are going to be looking into what the psalmist said in Psalm 111, verse 2, which reads, The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure. The works of the Lord in this case refer to the things that God does, the acts of God. Like, for example, when God delivered the Israelites from Egypt with all the miracles that were involved. That was an act of God. It was a work of the Lord. And to take pleasure in the works of the Lord is to constantly seek after them, to be excited about such things, to love such things, and to want to be a part of such things. Uh, Jesus Christ described it as hungering and thirsting after righteousness in Matthew chapter 5 or 6. And he concluded that statement with the fact that such ones who desire righteousness and who love the things of God will be filled. The psalmist in more than one text described how this desire works. He said in Psalm 119 verse 162, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. The psalmist also said in Psalm 122 verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. This is what that desire looks like. And a good example of people who really had pleasure in the works of the Lord is Joshua and Caleb. If you read Numbers chapter 13 verses 27 to 30, they were excited and confident to enter the land. And even though there were 10 spies who gave an evil report of the land and were saying, oh, the land is bad and we shouldn't go there because the children of Anak, you know, the giants, they live there and we're like grasshoppers compared to them. So they were negative about it and they discouraged the people. But Joshua and Caleb were excited about it. They had pleasure in such works and they earnestly sought to enter that glorious land which God Almighty had promised them. And at the end of the day, it was only Joshua and Caleb, out of all the millions of people that left the land of Egypt above 20 years old, that entered into the promised land. If we read Numbers chapter 14, verses 24 and 30, and chapter 32, verses 10 to 12. So those people who are seeking the works of the Lord like that, they're the people who reap the benefits in the end. Another good example of someone who had pleasure in the works of the Lord was Daniel. If you look at Daniel chapter 1, verses 8 to 16. He refused to eat the king's meat, that is, the meat of King Nebuchadnezzar, because they were unclean and unholy. They were sacrificed to Babylonian gods and all that, and so he didn't want to have anything to do with that. He sought righteousness. He wanted to live a holy life. God Almighty saw that. And gave him what he desired. He gave him wisdom and understanding of exceeding value. If we read Daniel chapter 1 verses 17 to 20. And in Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. The angel also mentioned that kind of interest and love that Daniel had for wisdom and with things of God. He said, fear not Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. One more example is Simeon and his love for the works of the Lord. If you read Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. Simeon was a just and devout man, as the text says, and was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He knew all the works that God Almighty had done from delivering the Israelites from Egyptian bondage, to bringing them back from Babylonian exile, and all the miracles that were involved in making that happen. And knowing all this, he also had that inner desire of wanting God to, you know, do something similar for his people at that time, because there were a lot of tensions between the people of Judea and the Romans who were ruling them at that time. So he wanted God to redeem his people. And because he had that desire, God Almighty told him that before he would die, he would see his only begotten son. And when he was able to hold Jesus Christ in his arms, he said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, 
and the glory of thy people Israel. If you read Luke chapter 2, verses 29 to 32. So this is how we have pleasure in the works of the Lord. This is how we seek such things when we have that love for it, that desire. And this is also relevant in our time, the last days, because Christ has returned as king in fulfillment of the signs of the times in Matthew chapter 24, verses 7 and 8, concerning nation rising against nation and so on, which fulfilled in the two world wars when the world's greatest powers fought against each other and the system that used to rule the world at that time collapsed and it eventually changed to a more democratic system that suited the desires of all nations better. If you read Haggai chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. So in other words, the kingdom of God, which God Almighty promised to establish in the last days, has indeed been established. Those who have that inner desire for the works of God, who have pleasure in such things, they will begin to seek the kingdom, as Christ used a parable to teach in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which, when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. So if we're earnestly seeking to be able to be a part of the kingdom because we love the kingdom, then God Almighty will reveal to us what the kingdom is all about, and he will make us to understand it. And events of the future, which the kingdom will bring about, he will reveal them to us also. As he said to Amos the prophet, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. If we read Amos chapter 3, verse 7. See also Psalms chapter 25, verse 14. King Solomon also said in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 to 6, that if we love wisdom and we seek it with all our heart, then we will also get it. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for her treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. I just cut it short. I went to verse 1 and I skipped to verses 4, 5, and 6. So when we seek the things of God, then we'll begin to get it in abundance, just as how people who seek the things of this life become masters of it and they get rich and all that. If we love the things of God, if we have pleasure in such things, then God Almighty will also open our eyes to many more things which we love to know. And that is where I'm going to stop on breaking down what the psalmist said in Psalm 111, verse 2, which reads, The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when we come back with another video. Have a good day, and God bless you.